Welcome, guys, to the Recreational Bodybuilding Podcast. We are here for episode four. I'm your host, Brett Freeman. We've got Jack Rayner on the other side. And today we are joined again by a special host, a uh, special guest, sorry, not a host, uh, Mr. Harry Smith. Uh, Harry, do you want to maybe introduce yourself to the, uh, the listeners? Yeah, I, I can do it. I don't think I'm anything interesting, though. I had to randomly do a questionnaire for something unrelated the other day. And it was like, tell us something interesting about yourself. And I pondered for literally like 15 minutes about something interesting about myself. But anyway, so a quick <laughs> overview. I'm a, I'm a PT and I am a MNU certified nutritionist. I've been a PT for about six or seven years now. Um, over that time, I've worked with people online and in person. Right now, I'm pretty much dead down the middle, 50-50 with my offline clients versus online clients. And I'm also one of the Revive Stronger coaches to so shout out Revive Stronger. I've been with them for, what's the month now? Probably six months, I think. But before that, I'd spent like three or four years working with people online, failing and succeeding over that time. And yeah. Nice. That's yeah. pretty much a nice, short, sharp overview. <laughs> yeah, and we had, a, we, had, we had Steve Hall on last time. Um, obviously, the, the founder and coach at Revive Stronger. So um, I assume most people listening to this are already familiar with, with, with that cool team um but yeah so harry the reason we mentioned we sort of brought you on was you've been talking a lot on your socials around your transition or building of your home gym in your garage sounds like a sex change by the way yeah my transition (laughs) (laughs) we are on my my only fans page yeah i've got i've got access to that so it's um pay for gay is that is that is is that it (laughs) Um, but yeah, so what I thought would be really cool and I, I don't train, I've never trained in sort of a home gym environment, a jack, I don't know if you have either. Um, but what I thought would be really cool is for, to sort of use this time to, to help people who maybe are considering it or, or have a, maybe a little setup at home and, but maybe want to grow it a bit further to really get the most out of, out of training at home. Um, but what I thought would be really cool, Harry, is maybe, Tell us why maybe you decided to go from training in a gym to then wanting to build your gym at home. I think it's the same reason everyone wanted it. They just wanted it. You didn't really think much into it other than the fact that it just think it'd be really cool to have your own gym and your own stuff. And it's something that I'm, I'm very much into goal setting and I like write down all my goals and stuff like that. And it's just one of those things where when I was writing goals down like four or five years ago, it just always came up was like, I want my own home gym. I want my own home gym. And I can't really put a thing on why that is. I think it was just, um, I've, I've always grown up with a home gym with my parents because my dad is into lifting as well, but it was, it was not like the kind of home gym you could actually make progress in. It was just a, like an Argos bench, you know, where the uprights are too close together. So you pinch your hands when you rack and unrack the bar, the spin lock barbells and stuff like that. So I guess that was the original inspiration for it. And I just wanted to have a really cool facility that was just mine. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I've, uh, the closest I got to a home gym was, I think I mentioned it on, a, on one of our first podcasts, um, was I got a bench at like 14, which is like one of those York benches. Yeah, that's what my dad had. Oh, yeah. man. With the leg extension bit on the end. Yeah. That I never yeah. used. Like, I, I didn't even know how to put a weight on it, like a, like a weight plate to even get anything out of it. Um, and it just sat in my room gathering dust for about a year. Um, and that was, that was literally as close as I could even get. And I was just completely useless. My dad's one, his leg extension bit, was, the bench was so close to the wall, you couldn't even use it anyway, even if you wanted to, because <laughs> the room was so small. Oh, man. And, and <clears throat> so where did you start then, with equipment-wise, with um, starting to build it? What were your, I guess, main things and where are you up to now? So I've been planning it for like the best part, like four or five years. So I've had a note in my phone that whole time where I'd kind of listed everything that I felt like I'd need versus everything that I wanted. And then almost did like a sort of mental Venn diagram of like where the crossover is versus the things I need and the things that I want. And then it was from there that I deduced like the kind of equipment that I was 100% going to have. And the way that I decided on that was based on versatility and the amount of exercises I can get from it, but not just like the, total exercises are the total effective exercises I could get. So the first thing I thought I'm going to need was obviously a rack of some kind, but I never wanted a massive, like, you know, like power rack with four pillars and really didn't see the point. Like I've, I've trained in commercial gyms like forever 
how often do you ever actually need to have a rack that has our like four uprights? It's not like we're doing like 300 kilo bench presses or anything like that. So I knew that I just needed like a squat rack or a half rack of some kind. And then um, I toyed with the idea of getting um, like a leg press or something along those lines. But then in the end, I settled on a Smith machine because it essentially doubled or maybe even tripled the available exercises that you have. Um, once I'd got past the like fact that a Smith machine is, is a girl exercise, a girl machine. I'm, like, I'm, joking, I'm joking. But um, yeah, so then so I thought barbell, Smith machine and then weight plates. And that would have me mostly sorted. Obviously a bench as well. And then I went on to the nice to haves and the want to haves, which was like dumbbells. Um, also, yeah, I needed essentially just for what, what are the fundamental movement patterns that I need to be able to do? I need to do horizontal pushing and pulling, vertical pushing and pulling. I need to be able to do squat patterns, lunge patterns, deadlift patterns, and uh, a knee flexion because I'd already kind of got knee extension sorted with the lunges and squat patterns. So that's where it kind of came from. And then from there, like I said, I deduced all this like four or five years ago. I was just doing research over time and trying to figure out can I actually afford some commercial grade equipment? Because no one wants to be like sitting on a rickety like leg extension that you feel like what, what's going to happen or my knee's going to break or is the bench going to break? I didn't want that to be my situation. So I got a lot of the stuff from Strength Shop. Have you heard of them? Strength Shop UK. I've I think not. they're based worldwide, but they make um, them do make commercial grade equipment. And they take that commercial grade quality into some of the home stuff. Like they make um, racks just designed for garages and stuff like that. So I got a folding garage rack just because me being an um, offline PT as well, there's always a bit of me that's considered the idea of potentially training clients from home, but not until it's like, I don't want to do it because I need the money. I want to do it because it's something I want to do rather than, yeah, if that makes sense. So I wanted to have the ability to be able to fold the rack flat out the way so I would have space in the garage if I ever wanted it. So I got their folding garage rack and I actually got a really good deal on that one because um, they have B grade equipment, stuff that's been damaged in storage and stuff like that. So I picked up the rack there. So I think it's about a hundred quid cheaper than it would have been. And it wasn't that expensive in the first place. I think it's about 300 quid. And that, um, yeah, so that was like the bread and butter of the gym. And but surprisingly, I haven't even used the rack as much, anywhere near as much as I thought I would. But that had a pull up bar across the top. So that, as far as I was concerned, I've got like loads of movement patterns there. So I've got pull-ups, hanging knee raises, um, bench, I've got a bench as well. So well, yeah, you know, everything you can do in a power rack, I can now do. And then um, I kind of just did research into where can I get the highest quality for the best price. And I tended to avoid, you know, like the, the top websites that show up when you Google it. Like, I don't know if you ever have, but like fitness superstore and stuff like that. Just because have you ever been to a gym, like for example, cable attachments, you know, when the handles are like the glue has come off and they're not really attached anymore. So I'd kind of deduced because I've worked in gyms for like the best part of 10 years. I know kind of where the shitty equipment comes from and where the good equipment comes from. So I knew to start with, you can just avoid like essentially like the first five results on, on Google because that's all like the mass produced Chinese stuff mm -hmm. that just, yeah, just falls apart or is it. Or even worse, the thing that drives me mental is, you know, when the knurling is different on each side of the attachment. So on like your right hand is really sharp and on the left hand it's like non-existent and you're like, what the hell? But yeah, so um, um, my research led me to Mirafit. Have you heard of them? So Mirafit makes yeah. semi-commercial stuff. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't hold up to the punishment of a commercial gym, but it would be good enough for, say, like a PT studio. So that's where I got a lot of my stuff from. And because they're insanely cheap, I didn't need to buy it secondhand. So like the bench was a hundred quid. Um, if a massive, like, I don't know, uh, 130 kilo powerlifter got on it, I'd probably wince. But for me at like 80 odd kilos with a max bench press ever of like 140, there was no chance I'm ever going to break this bench. So that would do. But like I said, if that was in a commercial gym environment, it would get royally fucked up. And my girlfriend is actually managing, successfully managing to fuck it up doing hip thrusts on it. Because it's like, it's very good when your weight is distributed evenly, but when you like hang a weight off the end, you can kind of see it like curving a little bit. So I'd say like, yeah, from that, it's, it's, it's great for everything but hip thrusts. And I got dumbbells from there as well because their dumbbells tend to, were the cheapest on the market. So I've got five to 20 kilos. The way I came to that uh, conclusion was like, what dumbbells do I actually use the most frequently in a gym? And it's for isolation exercises. You tend to use anywhere between like five and maybe 20, 25 kilos. The 30, 35, 40, 45 kilo dumbbells, I would only use if I'd programmed something like um, bent over dumbbell rows or incline dumbbell presses or something along those lines. And I thought at least until 
I can afford to buy them because the heavier the dumbbells get, the more expensive they get, obviously. So like one pair of 40 kilo dumbbells costs more than the whole rack with like five, 10, 15, 20 because of the weight of the dumbbells. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, so I just thought I can just program barbell and Smith machine stuff until I can afford them. And then, yeah, so basically I've completely lost myself, but oh yeah, I've got a lap pull down and a cable station from Mirafit as well. That I don't understand how cheap that was. It's 170 quid and it was, uh, it's a lap pull down with, so it's got a high pulley, a medium pulley, which is useless, and then a bottom pulley for essentially doing like cable rows and curls and that kind of thing, and then various attachments. But I just can't understand how it was so cheap. The only issue I have with that is it's not tall enough. I've got quite long arms relative to my torso, and I found that I had to, like, if I wanted a full depression, sorry, elevation of my scapula, I would top it out. Uh, but that the way I got around that was by um, not using the chain, because they, they give you, like, they, you've got the end of the cable, and then a chain and then like a clip to clip it to the attachment. If I get rid of the chain, then I have like, it just looks ugly because it's sticking up at an odd angle when you're not using it basically. But, um, yeah, so I've got that. And how do I, if, uh, have we gone on to the programming question yet? So I've kind of discussed equipment. You can, you can also, yeah, you sorry, can. Facebook marketplace is the best place to get equipment. Just because I got a Smith machine with a hundred kilos of weights for a hundred quid. Wow. And that was essentially just because some, it's like a car, like you never need to buy a car new because let someone else buy it new and lose like five grand straight away. And then you go and buy it off them, at a massive saving. And then it, you can even make money on it if you're smart. And I feel like a lot of the stuff I've bought on Facebook, I could sell it for triple, quadruple, even five times the price that I bought it for. And that was just because, um, again, I think a skill I've learned from being a PT over the years is um, just be really cheeky with sales. So they had it up for 300. I said, would you accept 50? And they're like, no way. And then I was like, would you accept a hundred? They're like, no, 150. And I was like, hundred and I'll pick up tomorrow. And they're like, yeah, done. So <laughs> it's just, you just, if you don't ask, you don't get, it's literally like that. And you should and not bring same, the mandem with you and, and these yeah, exactly. Get, like, jacked just, out of them. Just don't pay them. Yeah. Just, yeah. just go over there and just only give them <laughs> half the money. It's like but, GTA. Um, same thing with the leg curl and leg extension. That was the, probably the individual, individually the most expensive thing I bought because I did loads of research and essentially every leg extension leg curl hybrid just looks shit like it's like a case of instead of doing you can either get a leg extension that does one thing good or a leg curl that does one thing good and the combination of the two it seems to compromise on both the only one i could find that had pretty good reviews across the board as in not just people who didn't know what they were talking about because that's another issue you find with buying gym equipment online is that you get like some just old lady saying like yeah this leg extension was great it's like she doesn't even she wouldn't know a bad one from a good one like that's why I just avoid Amazon for gym equipment for that reason. Um, but if you are looking for micro scales to weigh out your own pre-workouts, the questions about micro scales are hilarious. That's another tangent anyway. But um, yeah, things like, will this fit inside my, my glove box of my car and stuff like that. But um, yeah, <laughs> so going back to that, um, I, I settled on a brand called um, ATX and their barbarian line that you probably haven't heard of it. But um, as a company, the website in the UK, I think is the gymrevolution.co.uk. And they make really, they make like their, their target market is like PT studios. So they make stuff that like this leg extension leg curl I've got, it would, it could get run over by like a bin lorry and the bin lorry would break. It's, it's way more like heavy duty than I would ever need. And that works really well. It's actually the best leg extension I've ever used. And I feel like incredibly grateful because everything you buy on Facebook, you're essentially taking a gamble. Like, cause I bought it on Facebook for half the price. It should have been about 800 pounds brand new. I think I paid about 250. Same, same tactics, just saying, I'll take it off you right now if you take a ridiculously low offer. And then people have to weigh up, like, do I want to get rid of it more than I want a fair price for it? But um, yeah, so that was awesome. But the leg curl side of it didn't work amazingly well. I have to attach a, a resistance band to it because otherwise it just slaps on your ass at the top. <laughs> so that's a, a consideration I have to make. And as a result of that, going to programming considerations, um, leg curls are now actually a very stressful movement for me because um, I don't know if either of you ever done any martial arts, have you done jujitsu or anything like that? So do you know what an arm bar is where someone's like locked up your arm? Mm. So you know that it's like a shitload of stress through there because your arm is essentially locked out. It is a similar effect on the um, leg curl for my knee because all the tension is when your leg is straight, it feels like it's so much tension for you to overcome that um, it's, it's like a really intense hamstring, like a, a huge amount of force is required to get over that straight leg position. And then once you get near the top, there's no tension left. 
And as a result of that, it makes me incredibly sore because it's almost like I'm putting myself in a really compromised knee position. So to get around that, I used a resistance band with uh, slightly lighter loads and that has helped a lot. But because of that, the, the movement is a lot more stressful than say a commercial gym variant would be. I can only do like two or three sets before my hamstrings are completely fried. And I think that's very much like if, if your only bicep exercise was like preacher curls, but like a almost 180 degree angle versus that, you'd like have no elbows left after a while. Yeah, I've um, used a uh, leg curl very similar to it. And yeah, it used to have like a pad right, like just below my patella. So we, I don't know if you've ever played football mm-hmm. and you've got that, it's an Osgood Slatter. Mm-hmm. a little bump it used to like really like dig in that and it used to be exactly the same it used to really hurt um but yeah so it cool. doesn't hurt a great deal but um i can tell that it, there's just so so much force like um because i have done jujitsu and stuff i did it quite a lot i know what like your leg being locked up feels like and it kind of feel is very similar to that sensation when your leg is fully straightened so for that reason obviously i don't want to overload that particular movement pattern but then going into programming away from essentially where to buy the equipment, um, I listed all the equipment that I had. And then I just listed every single productive exercise that I think I could do for every movement pattern. So made a essentially a table that had like knee flexion, uh, knee extension, horizontal push, horizontal pull, blah, 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 blah. And then wrote down as many exercises for each category as I could. And I was really surprised at how many I got. Obviously, I did this in the spreadsheet, so because I like spreadsheets. But um, yeah, and then essentially found I had uh, literally between 10 and 30 exercises for every single category. And then when you think about how many um, exercises you actually need to put together a productive training block, I've essentially got like, theoretically got like a decade of combinations of training I could do. And I was really surprised at that because before having the garage gym myself, anytime I'd had an online client and they'd said like, oh, I've got a home gym, I'd always been a bit like, <sighs> like, I'm sure you kind of feel the same way. Like you feel like they're either not gonna have that much equipment or the equipment they do have isn't gonna be that good. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it was that experience of working with people like that, that allowed me to, that helped me select the equipment I wanted as well, because I didn't wanna to have to make any compromises. I wanted it to be a gym that I actually wanna train in and that people wanna train in rather than like Harry's shitty little dungeon. <laughs> So I think, yeah, I, yeah, it's something that I've been planning for a really long time. And I've had like no expense spared on it. I've not gone mad. Like, it's not like I've bought like a, a all rogue equipment or anything like that. But um, I've not gone cheap on anything apart from stuff that doesn't matter. Like uh, collars on a barbell and that kind of thing. I'm not going to spend like a hundred quid on like shiny like, chromed collars or anything like that. Or like get my name like engraved into the rack. Is <laughs> So, yeah. And barbells as well. Barbells I've invested in because like, how often do you go to a commercial gym that actually have a decent quality barbell? Oh dear. Have you ever, have you ever used an, an Aleco bar or anything like that? At the commercial gym, yeah. One. Well, that's it. <laughs> so when you, when you use something like an Aleco <laughs> bar, it makes you never want to use another bar again? It's literally like when you've sat in, I don't know, like a Lamborghini or something like that and then you have to go get in your Fiesta afterwards, you'd like... Yeah. So I, I didn't get like an amazing bar. I got the best bar I could afford without having to import something, which was a bastard power bar. And I had used them before. Have you ever used those? No, we've, so we've just got loads of, I think they're called prime, prime strength, primal strength. Yeah. Primal strength. And they've got so much whip in them. So when you're like at the bottom of an RDL, you're the, the kind of um, the plates are touching before you can even like get your hamstring fully stretched, which sucks. But yeah, yeah there, there might be a weightlifting specific barbell as well. Cause I, I knew, again, I knew I wasn't going to be doing any weightlifting. I was only going to be doing bodybuilding style movements. So I actually bought a, a powerlifting barbell. So the collars have next to no spin mm-hmm. and the bar has almost no flex. So it feels really rigid because have you ever used a, a bar with really loose collars when you're bench pressing and the plates are like rolling around mm-hmm. and it's almost like you're using, what do they call it? Like uh, the tornado bar or something like that. You know, the one that's like made of bamboo and oh, yeah, yeah. Like, on the way up and down. And my girlfriend hates it. I don't know why she hates it, but again, like with Olympic weightlifting, the collars have to be loose so you can rotate yourself, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like rotate the bar. Whereas I'm not going to be doing any of that kind of thing. So I just wanted a really rigid bar with really aggressive knurling because I really like it when it feels like you're holding onto broken glass. Do you know the mm-hmm. kind of sensation? Mm-hmm. If you ever used like proper Aleco bars as well, like I've had my hands bleeding from using those before for like a day. I think they must have been brand new, but still it's like, 
and that was with heavy deadlifts, not just from like moving it around. It's not like you're going to cut yourself over. And bicep curls. No. Yeah, bicep curls in the squat rack. But yeah, I think I've been ranting. What was your next question? No, you 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 literally covered like ninety percent of it, which is uh, which is makes right, my cool job a lot yeah <laughs> um, another podcast on the way <laughs> i'd uh I'd, I'd be interested to to understand if there's any sort of issues that you found with with starting to train at home around maybe your your progression methods exercise variation yeah so um progression i made sure i bought enough weight plates that was the important thing and then fractional weight plates as well so like the 2.5s and the 1.25s because my first like couple of weeks i i thought i already had them but I didn't because when I bought that job lot on Facebook, I, I thought it had like 1.25s and stuff in it, but it didn't. So for my first few weeks, I actually realized how important those micro plates are because I was finding that, for example, like 60 kilo split squat was too, he- wasn't heavy enough, but my next available increment was 70 and 70 was like smashing me into the <laughs> ground. So I thought, oh yeah. So then obviously I bought the, the micro plates, but I can still do like the double, triple progression models that you would do in a commercial gym anyway. So, you know, like adding reps, adding sets, adding load, I can do all those things. But um, it's one thing, again, I'm trying to teach my girlfriend this too, because she keeps moaning about training in the garage, is um, like working on your intention in the set as well. So we're, we're training to grow muscle at the end of the day. So it's learning how to absolutely exploit the movement pattern to the maximum before complaining about that particular moving pattern. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. So for example, if I take a Smith machine hack squat, I want to, it's made me be so much more focused in the way that I'm performing an exercise because I know that I can't just, if I was in a commercial gym, I could sack it off and be like, I'll do leg press instead because I don't have that option. I have to be like, right, I need to do everything I can possibly do to make this uh, an overloading stimulatory movement. If stimulatory is a word, stimulating movement. Mm -hmm. It is now a word, yeah. Yeah, on this yeah. podcast, anything is a word. Yeah, awesome. I remember that. And yeah, we. I've got a um, client uh, in Joe, um, and he he tried to go from like a, a a garage gym to a commercial gym, and it was kind of like we had like a two or three days where we had really generic kind of programming, where we'd say like a uh, like a quad kind of press variation it would either be like a smith squat or it'd be like a leg presses do you ever find that you want to kind of go in the commercial gym or would you say like all of your program is set to your home gym so i've got i, I train six days a week i've got five days program oh, cool. for the home gym uh it's because i reached a point where the the dreaded point in your career when you no longer feel like you're an intermediate and you have to do that extra day or you don't make progress essentially um so yeah um, i do six days a week but five of those days are programmed with the garage gym in mind and then one of those days i could do it in the garage if i wanted to but um i like doing one of my leg days in uh one of the gyms i've always worked in so i i work in a commercial gym and i like to visit a strongman facility that's near me as well mm-hmm. just because it keeps me sociable that's the main thing it reminds people that i'm alive mm-hmm. and that um yeah i just like the interaction as well and they have things i don't have for example i don't have any way of doing cardio in my garage without actually taking my bike out for a ride in in the outside world but who really wants to do that <laughs> who wants to go outside who wants to go outside for air yeah exactly <laughs> and then my other option would be to get like a turbo trainer and stare at the garage door while i'm doing cardio which i don't really want to do either so um I go there because I can do a little bit of a cardio warm up before my quad focus leg day. Cause that's one thing I have noticed actually without having an ability to do a proper cardio warm up first. Um, my knees take a lot longer to ease into whatever movement I'm doing when it, when it's like a squat movement pattern. So, cause my, my standard routine would be like five to 10 minutes of cycling before, um, then starting my like warm up sets with squats, you know, the barbell, then 60, then hundred, et cetera, et cetera. But jumping straight in from being like, it's not cold in the garage, but it's, it's like not warm. Mm. It's like hoodie, hoodie weather, not like coat weather. Um, I'm jumping straight into doing the squats and I'm like doing extra sets of squats. But you know what it's like when you're squatting with the empty bar, you're just like, oh, fuck this. And you want to put weights on it. So yeah, yeah I definitely need to get a, a bike. But um, yeah, so I work out. So yeah, one, one workout is in the natural gym. And that gym, ironically, I only use the stuff I already have anyway. I use like the bar, the power bar and the squat rack and stuff. Yep. But it does have a leg press and a hack squat and stuff like that. So that having that one day in that gym does add all that variety to my training should I want it there. And I think I'll keep that in for the reasons I said, just because 
everyone I've spoken to who does train exclusively from home, they do miss the kind of social side of it and like the, the interaction and stuff. And of the gyms that I have access to, that's the preferred environment, the strongman facility, because it's not like, like for a start, you don't have to wait 45 minutes to use the one bench press that's there at, at the other gym. Yeah. yeah. That is long, isn't it? It doesn't matter what time you go to a commercial gym, even if it's the middle of the fucking day, there's always mm-hmm. someone using what you want to use, isn't there? Yeah. What you got to do is ask the spider how many sets they've got left. That's it. <laughs> because, I, because I work in this gym, actually, as a PT, I don't like doing that because people just give up the equipment to me and it makes me feel like a massive douche. Where I'm yeah, like, yeah. how many sets have you got? And they're like, no, you have it. I'm like, no, I wasn't <laughs> asking to have it. I was just asking to, yeah. <laughs> and, and what have you found sort of when you, now you've moved, I guess, doing five of your six sessions to in your home gym. You mentioned that you missed sort of, you, you quite liked having the social interaction of, of, I guess, a more commercial gym or, or the strongman gym. Have you found anything that you've, after a while of, of training at home, that you've like realized that, wow, this is so much better because I actually train at home rather than being in the gym? Yeah. Have you noticed the influx of topless selfies on my Instagram has increased since I've been training at home? <laughs> yeah. So there's that aspect of it where um, when you get hot, you, no, you, you never get hot enough to take your top off, but you know what I mean? Like you can just strip down if you want. Um, I, my, my dad has always trained in his underwear, if anyone wants to know. I don't, but that's what he would say is the benefit of having a home gym. He's freaked out many of my friends when I was a teenager, but <laughs> some bloke walking out in, in wire fronts all pumped up. Like, <laughs> spare bedroom. But, um, yeah, Does anyone so, want a biscuit? <laughs> but yeah, so one thing that I really love about it is being able to train any time that I like. And I know that sounds silly, but um, I, I don't know about you guys, like your online coaches too. I struggle to concentrate on my workout if I know I've got like say five or six check-ins to do. They just sit on my mind, not like creating a lot of stress, but they just kill my concentration. So I like the fact that I can get up, I can do the check-ins, I can get the work out of the way. And whether I finish the work at like 1 p.m. or 8 p.m., I can still do the workout afterwards. I really mm-hmm. appreciate that. I've always been a very... Um, what's the word? I'm very introverted naturally and I'm not, but I don't necessarily like thrive on social interaction. I've always been someone who's quite inwardly focused rather than outwardly focused. So when I'm in the gym anyway, I I come across as someone who people don't want to talk to or interact with. I don't know if you guys resonate with that. I'm the exact same. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like my girlfriend always says when she goes to the gym, she hates it because her session takes four hours because she can't stop talking to people. And I'm like, we can go to the same gym at the same time. And I don't have that problem. And I think it's because I just exude like, don't bother him while he's training. Whereas she's all like, come and bother me while I'm training. Yeah. But yeah, so I, and I'm getting my sessions done really quick from home as well, which I guess is the fact that I'm not waiting on equipment. I've only got like a, a 28 meter square rectangle. I'm not having to walk across the gym um, and yeah, not interacting with people either. So I can get a session done really, really quick and I can get really, really focused as well which is quite funny because I'll even, I even do the same routines in the garage that I would in a gym. So I still use my AirPods, even though I could listen to music out loud if I wanted to. And I think it's just because I'm used to that, like really inwardly focused environment. And it's quite funny. Like even when my girlfriend and I are training in at the same time, um, I can tell, I can tell she's talking to me, but I, I just like the earphones because I can completely block out what she's saying. Whereas if, well, yeah, I don't know. I just like that side of it, but I miss the mirrors. I need to get a mirror. You need some mirrors and downlighting. Yeah, I've got a downlight. But there's only one right in the middle. So oh. it means that if I stand too close to it, all you see is like glare. You need like a, a what do you call it? Like a movable mirror. You can just move it near the downlighting. Then you can take selfies. A ring light. Yeah, you can just, like, yeah, exactly. You just yeah. bring the ring light in. But I also, with the, well. it's funny with the AirPods uh, comment because I literally put my AirPods in the gym and play no music. But if people come up to me, I'm like, I don't know, mate. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> do, you, do you do that thing where you, you're aware you're being spoken to, but you ignore it anyway, yep. just relying on the fact that you got the AirPods in? Yeah. Yep. So I do that to Hannah, even though we're the only two people in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell she's asking me a question. But that, like that's one thing. you in your hand with like the play button. It's like, you're not even playing anything. <laughs> yeah. Or I hear her say, are you listening to something? And I feel like if I even say yes, then that's, <laughs> it, that's inviting her to, to have that conversation in the first place. So you know when you're just like, no. But um, tra- two people training in the garage at the same time can be problematic because we only have enough equipment for like one person to be working out at a time. So that's one thing which isn't relevant for everyone that trains at home. 
But um, yeah, so we've got about 220 kilos worth of plates. But the plates that get used the most frequently, like the 60 kg bumpers and sorry, the 20 kg bumpers and stuff like that. Whoa, so, 60 kg bumpers. Oh, bicep curls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have noticed. And, and you know what? The problem of people not putting shit away, I still have that problem. <laughs> even though there's only two people that have access to the gym because that's what everyone says like they're jokingly saying like the garage gym instagram accounts and stuff they're like oh you never have to go searching for like a collar that's the other side of the gym i'm like no you still do yeah no i do definitely <laughs> she never puts anything away like, this has turned into a bit of a girlfriend bitching fest let's stop that now <laughs> at least for me yeah <laughs> she won't she doesn't uh-uh. even know podcasts are huh? I, I'm staying quiet about mine. So, is that because she's sitting the other side of the no, table, no, no, like, not, staring not, at you? No, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so long, long-term programming-wise, um, I can't attest to that because I haven't had the garage gym in the mm-hmm. long term. But I know. I uh, shout out Andy Catley. Do you know who he is? Yes. Yeah, garage gym MacGyver. Mr. I hate Smith squats. Yeah, exactly. So I love sending him the videos of me doing Smith machine squats. <laughs> Wear, wearing my mankini as well <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a condom on just because you have to yes but, um, protection exactly but um yeah so he he's been training at home for for ages and he answered all my question was questions and was really helpful when i was getting started but um he's also very much into powerlifting and i feel like powerlifting from a garage gym is very simple and easy to implement because you just need a barbell a rack and a bench mm. the issue that i had initially when i was planning what to get and and how, how to program was the fact that um, bodybuilding's got a lot more variables you need to manage, like um, fatigue and exercise variation and stuff like that. So I needed to really put a lot of thought into what equipment to get and how to program and that kind of stuff, just from a bodybuilding perspective, like um, not accumulating too much fatigue from any particular movement pattern. So like, I don't know what your guys' training history is like, but um, I'm really prone to elbow tendonitis and stuff like that. So obviously I couldn't just abuse. Um, I've always, I've only ever had issues when I do loads of conventional deadlifts. So I just, I couldn't abuse conventional deadlifts or deadlift movement patterns for development because I know it's going to piss off my elbow before it gives me any like meaningful stimulus Mm -hmm. down there. So that was one thing I had to bear in mind. Yeah. Nice one. Um, cool. Jack, any questions or Oh, I think that was a. Re- I just, I just, just going to say before that I love Smith Scott. So if Andrew is listening, then fuck him. <laughs> I was, was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Make me too, too insecure to share my Smith machine online. Yeah, I, I, I do admire his rogue plates. I think they're pretty cool. But yeah, there you go. Buy it. Awesome, cool. Well, thanks for coming on, Harry. I think it was. I think that was a really useful. Um, discussion especially for people anyone who's looking to build a home gym i think you've given a few good tips on how to how to save money and what what brands to look for as well which is pretty summarize it quickly yeah you don't need a rack as much as you think you do Mm -hmm. because most of the things we do you can do without a rack you can just do with with like bench press uprights for example you need to get a knee flexion machine of some kind you can't avoid that and that's the main issue i encounter with clients who train from home is they don't have any way of doing knee flexion because they didn't value, they didn't, they're not all of them are PTs, not all of them realize, you know, like every movement pattern they need to have. And um, yeah, dumbbells are awesome. Those interchangeable ones are shit. So you just invest, <laughs> oh, selectable invest in dumbbells. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know, like they both flex, I think is the main brand. Like they're like, they, they look like, stupid. They're like 300 quid and they only yeah, go up to like 32.5 kilos. I'm like, I'd rather just buy a pair of 32.5 kilo dumbbells for like a hundred quid. Yeah. And everyone likes the hex dumbbells. You know, like the, the hex mm. ones with the rubber mm. hex ones. Yeah. They're way better than any of the other ones. <laughs> Have you ever used the Watson ones while we speak of that? They're massive fat grips. They're so hard to use. Like, mm-hmm. I was, I, I worked out with them before and I was, I was doing like norm, my normal bench press that I would be using like 35 kilo dumbbells for. I had to use like 25s because the yeah. handles were so big. It was, I've so used, I think there are, uh, there are muscle works in Bethnal green. Um, they're quite, I think that, but they have varied. So you might mm. pick up a Watson or you might pick up like a, I think they're a Jordan one yeah. as well. But I yeah. remember training there and it was like, in just all these different brands of dumbbells all on the same rack and yeah. they're mismatched and stuff. And then, me who like if you go in my garage gym before hannah's been in there you'll see everything is arranged perfectly there's nothing on the floor and it's just me looking at this rack in muscle website yeah <laughs> like, 
Damn. How am I going to do this? Try not to, to get tetanus from a dumbbell. Yeah. <laughs> like there's, there's worse gyms near me. I won't name them, but there's a gym near me where like name them. people... Nah. Name people them. Like, oh, do you want to come and do a workout here with me? I'm like, mm, I don't fancy getting AIDS, so no. <laughs> Rather sick pins in my eyes. Yeah, well, definitely not pins that you find in that gym. That's <laughs> You will tough. find pins, trust me, <laughs> all over the changing rooms. Needles. Oh. oh perks, perks of uh, training at home, eh? Yeah. It's only your own needles. In peace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so, Harry, where can we find you for anyone who wants to know more about what you do? You are... Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. <laughs> Lurking on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> the weird thing was when you first said that, my immediate reaction was to say my actual address. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, you give it away if you open up your, your gym to, to members um yeah it's, it's three thousand pounds per visit because it was obviously really expensive i need to recoup some of the costs i hope that's not too much but no um you can find me on ig and that's about it because i won't reply to anything else on any other social media platform because facebook is so complicated i hate it and i don't know if you guys find the same problem I don't like I don't like Facebook. Facebook is for like sixty five year old women trying to like check in whilst they're like eating McDonald's. Is like nah, sorry, but sorry, it's Barbara, I don't want to know. Too many features in one place, and the fact it doesn't display things chronologically drives me mad. Because hmm. we we use it with a revive for like people to upload their their form videos and stuff like that. But it always uh, it shows you the most popular ones rather than the chronological order. So I end up missing them all the time. Sorry guys, but um yeah, and so you can find me on f- Instagram. Harry Smith underscore health because I didn't want to put underscore fitness because that's what everyone else does. So everyone, everyone does fitness or trainer or like horrible. B three, I think his name was fitness B three yeah. or, 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 or like those Rainer who like make people confuse their names I mean, for Ryan. And I mean, yeah, how I mean, many people think your name is actually Rainer? A thousand people. Honestly, the amount of like, hi Ryan. I'm like, I, I don't even reply anymore. I'm like, at least <laughs> your name right. You must get way more DMS than me. You've got like, 10,000 more followers. Yeah, I mean, it's not me like send me or use workout socks, but that's about it, really. I haven't had any really. I've had one of those. Like that. Yeah. They're never from women, hot women, ever, are they? It was from like. That's most of my. That's most of my. One, income. one from the gym. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like 70% of my income. I just send my socks. So. Yeah, well, mine comes from my OnlyFans account. But... Yeah. I need to get on that as well then. Yeah, that's actually a three thousand pound subscription a month as well. Because <laughs> why is everything three thousand pound? But I don't know. It's just the number that popped into my head when I thought <laughs> what's an unreasonable number to say. And I thought, what's the t- well, actually yeah, an interesting one? The total cost of the gym so far is probably about two and a half grand. In, if anyone's interesting, and um, I we can just go to my Instagram to look at the equipment. I'm not going to list it here because you're not going to write it down when you're driving or anything like that. So, or if you are, then you definitely shouldn't be. And, uh, and we take no responsibility as the podcast for any injuries or or deaths that may occur. But we all have public liability insurance because we're exactly. PTs and you need it. So. And the excess is three thousand pound. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, guys. Yo, Sweet. thank you for coming on, and guys, thank you for listening, and we will see you next time. Awesome. Ciao.